Edison was was it was his fault. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome to City Extra's post-match thoughts. Um, it's the it's a bad situation. Uh, we got a peak last night. Um, what a what a mess. We're going to go through it and um, go through some points that we feel that are sort of you know critical to the game and just sort of you know sums up our season really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm Lewis and above me is Jordan. Um, I think we need to get straight into it and it's just another defensive mistake, guys. This time it was from a solid player, usually a solid player in Zinchenko. Like, if you're picking your left back, either Mendy or Zinchenko, you'd probably say that you play Zinchenko because you want to be solid. Like, you, you don't want to really concede goals. Um, and obviously he's, he's, he's played and he's made a mistake. Look, he knows he's made a mistake. He's come out afterwards and he knows he's made a mistake. The club knows he's made Everyone knows he's made a mistake. His fault. Um, but yeah, it's another it's another mistake and another goal that's that's cost us a game. Uh, this seems to be like a recurring thing. Uh, <laughs> the goals we concede are all from mistakes. It never seems mm. to be like the other teams outplaying us or playing better football than us. It's always just us messing up ourselves. And mm. obviously, like you're saying, it Zinchenko's come out and apologised for the situation. Um, so credit to him for that. And players mm. will make mistakes. However, like you said uh, about. When you're choosing Mendy or Zinchenko, you choose Zinchenko when you want to be more shored up in yeah. defence. Uh, you choose Mendy if you want the attacking option because you know that Mendy defensively isn't the best. Mm. Um, and obviously, didn't provide that with the, the mistake they had. He didn't really have a good first half. No, or, he didn't. He didn't. He, the amount of times he gave the ball away. And this becomes a problem now because I was sort of on the on on the side, and you know some people might not agree, but I was sort of on the side that our left back situation. I felt I'd been sort of blown out of proportion a little bit. Yes, Mendy's like a bit rubbish defensively. But I just felt that, look, we know that, but going forward is decent and Zinchenko's solid. If Zinchenko starts to make defensive mistakes, then I'm, I'm quickly getting on the we need a left-back situation. Um, yeah, a bit of a weird one. I've got to say, though, I thought... I thought the, so some of the... Um, you know, some of the people saying that I thought Edison was was it was his fault. I just don't agree with that at all. I've got to come out here and, and defend Edison and think, look, he was off his line, but that's what you want him to be. He, the amount of times, and we see it with Eric Garcia. Was it in the second half yeah. um, when Eric Garcia gave a bad ball away? Um, and you know, any other goalkeeper in the league, the striker runs through his goals, but because of Edison's high line, he managed to come out and, and, and save it. And that's what he does. Yes, sometimes he's going to get caught out. Yes, sometimes he'll get sent off, but. You know, you can't be blaming Edison for the, for the goal. It's Shinshenko's fault. We all know that. Um, this this is the risk you take with Edison. Yeah. And that's like the risk reward situation that we, we've spoke about many times on the podcast is the fact that with Edison, he's told to play that high line because it's integral to the way we play football. And the same thing with the Garcia situation happened against Liverpool. And when you've seen Edison come out and clear it, mm. and, and it happens like... Time in, time out. It always happens. And I'm sure if you go back, you'll see how high he plays at the pitch. Yeah. Um, I've seen that the, the Southampton managers come out and said that it was part of their plan to expose Edison like that with the 40-yard goal. Nah, nah, that was lucky. Nah, so that, I kind of think like, come what? On. Don't, don't like, be stupid. That's just absolutely yeah, ridiculous. As if you're going to come out and say that, <laughs> what, so you expected Zinchenko to give the ball away in that position so you could yeah. lob Edison from 40 yards. Ain't right, in it? He's just yeah. taking claim for something that nah. he's done in it. He's outclassed Pep by that. You know what I mean? It was, it, was, it was a defensive mistake. Let us know what you guys think. Do we need a new left back? If so, who? You know, there's a lot of left backs out there. Comment in the comment section below who you think City should sign. Uh, if you think we do need a left back or, or do you think our left back situation Okay, um, we're, we're going to come on to someone now who's not having a good time, and it's Gabriel Jesus. Um, yeah, he's having a bad time. I think it's nine goals now, guys, without a get, without a goal. Um, you know, he just he can't buy a goal at the moment. He was poor against Liverpool. We beat Liverpool four 0 and he's a striker, and he had a poor game. Yeah, he had another poor game yesterday. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a difficult one, guys, because I I've been on I backed this guy for so long, and um, it's. He's starting to, he's starting to that that, that faith in him of, of replacing Sergio Aguero is, is, is quickly, quickly going down, and I don't know, well, he's just having a bad time. He is young, however, we also need someone to replace Aguero because, like when when Aguero got injured, I was obviously not happy that he was injured, but I was happy that I was going to see more of Jesus play because mm. um, I want him to come into that role a lot. And yeah. since Aguero has been injured and Jesus has been playing, he's not really had a good time, like. Especially after COVID, he's not really, he's not pressed on as I thought he would. I thought he'd be bagging goals and we'd see 
the side of jeans. Like with Phil Foden, we're seeing a lot of Phil Foden mm. and we're seeing really good performances from him. I kind of wanted that from Jesus to kind of like shore up a lot of City fans on the fact that, you know, Aguero is leaving next season, like, well, apparently. And then um, we need, as if like he will be the guy to replace him. Mm. But it's looking more now that we're going to have to spend big on a guy to replace Aguero mm. and Jesus will still be that second striker. Whereas I wanted it to be, Jesus will replace Aguero and we need someone to come in and replace Jesus. Yeah. I, I, um, there is a lot of like positives to play Jesus because like we've said before, he does fit our system really well. His pressing ability is really good. Mm. And we, we've seen that in a lot of games. But recently he's just not, he's not performing in front of goal. He can't score. Like he said, he can't buy a goal. Yeah. The guy's having a bad time up front. Yeah, he's having a bad time. What do you guys think? Do you think he's a striker or do you think he's a winger? Um, because there's loads of people who think that he should just play on the wing. Uh, he pays for Brazil. Um, and, and is he clinical enough to play up top? You know, I, I know obviously he's, he's nowhere near the, the, the level of Aguero when it comes to being clinical, but I've always felt that he's, the way he fits into the team out, out sort of weighs that. But, you know, recently I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind, guys. I'm starting to think, I don't know if, he, if, he's, if he's got it in him to, to, to lead the line of a club that's going to be going for Premier Leagues and Champions Leagues. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe he's going to be just a second choice striker at City for the rest of his career or, or play on the wing. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think again in the comment section below because it, it is a decisive one. You know, a lot of people think that he, should, he shouldn't be a striker and he should play on the wing. And then there's other people who back him uh, and say that, no, he's got, the, he's got the ability. So yeah, let us know what you guys think. Another player, guys, that I'm going to touch on, and some of you might not agree with it here, but I'm going to call out this guy's form, and it's Bernardo Silva, mate. Um, I'm just thinking, just thinking that you know his, his form recently has just not been up to where I'd expect it to be. Look, he's not played a lot of minutes. He's struggling to get in the side anyway because he's, you know, Maris is in is in great form on the wing. And if, if he's not playing, it's Foden, who's obviously playing really well on the wing as well. And then if you look in the central positions, he's not getting in ahead of Kevin or David. And then you've again got Foden, who's playing in the middle. So he's struggling to get in the side anyway. And then when he does get in the side, I'm just not seeing the same Bernardo Silva that I've seen over the years. That's, and, and I want to put it out there, guys, because, you know, there's a lot of people in the comment section who think I give like Mahrez a hard time because he's, you know... I don't know because when we don't think he should play or whatever, but I'm just I'm just calling it as I see it, and I don't think Bernardo Silva's playing the way he's been playing over the last couple of years. Yeah, I'll agree with that. He's not having a good time. Hopefully, like the whole uh, former temporary class is permanent. Hopefully, that stands because I do think he is a really, really, really good player, Bernardo Silva. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Hundred like, percent. Like, and obviously, I know that yeah. you're not you're not slating him for that. You're just slating for uh, he's out of form. That's, he's, that's he's, what I'm saying. Simple. Yeah, he's out of form. I think he's out of form right now. And should he be playing when he's out of form? Or how do you get him back into form? Yeah, how do how do we get him back? Do you into play him? him into form by just continually playing him, even if he's not particularly in great form? Or do you just take him out of the team? Do you, you know, yeah, we need I, we need to know. find a way to bring back the Bernardo that we've seen over the past few years, especially in time for the Champions League. That's by the time we get to the Champions League, we need Bardo, uh, Bernardo to be firing on all fronts. Yeah, the we, tricky thing is as well about him is what's his best position because a lot of the time he plays on the wing and you very rarely see him playing the central role. I actually think he's he's better in, on the wing position. I know some yeah, people think, oh, he's better inside. I actually don't. I disagree. I think he's better on the right wing. The problem is there, you know, he's, he's got a lot of competition because mm -hmm. you've got Mahrez and, you know, in Mahrez's first season, Bernardo was the better player, but Mahrez is now the better player on that wing for me. And now you've got Foden being added into the mix and playing as a winger who's, who's now starting to smash it as a winger as well. So how do you fit them all in? It's it's so tricky. And yeah, I just, I'm just, that's all I'm saying. I'm just pointing out there that I think Bernardo Silva is out of form. Do you agree? Let us know. Um, but yeah, that's just my, my comment on that. What's our next topic then? It's just, uh, I think just it's just... Just the team in general, really, like yesterday's performance. I didn't think we had the worst of games. Mm, we, we, I agree. We held the ball well, was controlling the game. We got done by one of our mistakes. And that seems to be, like we said before, that seems to be our downfall in all of these kind of situations. Mm. But it just reminds that if there's ever a game to sum up our season, it's that one. Yeah, because but, but the thing is, we said that against Chelsea as well. Yeah. So <laughs> Because every game that we lose or don't win, it's because of a mistake. So then everyone says, oh, this sums up our season, which is right, it does. But then the next game will sum up our season. And then the next game, you know what I mean? It's just mistake after mistake after mistake. I just want to see a goal against us where the t where our team doesn't make a mistake. Yeah, where it's just the other team playing really well. And you go, good oh football. yeah, that's a good goal. Well played, fair enough. It's not though. You ha when was the last time you gone? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, that was actually a good goal. It's always, oh, a defensive mistake or this or that. It's just... There's always it's, someone to blame, isn't there? Always someone to blame. And 
Yes, you know, I mean, this is this is, is the problem, guys. Is we're going away to these places. We had what 24, 25 shots um, in the game. We didn't even score. But even if we did, we need to score again because we can't keep clean sheets because of mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. Just this season's been weird, man. It's been so weird. Again, we're we're the highest goal scorers in the league. Just a rubbish defense, guys. And yeah, it's just it's 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 hard to watch at times because you know it's coming, don't you? You know yeah, in a game you know, that we're it? going to make a mistake, if not two, if not three. You know what I mean? So then again, that puts pressure on the attacking players because they know in the back of their head that I've got to, I've got to create or I've got to score three goals here, maybe even just to get a draw, let alone a win. The amount of goals we concede. We've been saying for some time that like, every time we we've mainly have been to a match, we'll say we'll score, but we'll instantly we'll be like, right, we need another one now because we mm. know that our defence isn't trustworthy. We know that we'll concede. So yeah. we always say that we need a two goal, you need that two goal cushion because we're always just liable to concede always. and make mistakes. 100%. It's just happened throughout the season. Right, so we'll move on to play ratings now. We're going to get, I, I think some people are going to be like well <laughs> disagreeing on some of these. Um, if you disagree with the play ratings that we're going to put before you in a second, leave, like, uh, leave a comment, let us know what you think they should be. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitating that we're going to get roasted after this video, yeah. so... Let's just go in it, and, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so here People they have are. their own opinions at the end of the day, so let's, let's just whack this out. Um, let me take the defence. Um, so, Edison, eight. I'm giving him an eight because, guys, for me, he's got nothing to worry about that goal. Not his problem, in my opinion. Um, I want him to play a high line because if he doesn't play a high line then our defence can't play a high line. So I think it, it's integral it's to integral. the way we play. And I accept, I accept the the errors that could happen, although I don't think he, it was his fault yesterday, but I accept the errors that will happen throughout the season, but I think the greater good in him doing it is better for the team. Cancelo, hey, guys, I thought he had a good game yesterday. You know what I mean? I thought he's good going forward. I thought he didn't do anything wrong. And I'm going to give him an eight. Garcia, 7.5. Um... Thought he had a good game again. No, no real issues. Um, obviously, it had the one error which he got saved from Edison, um, and that for me just just dropped him back to a seven point five. He had no no fault in the goal. Um, good on the ball, but yeah, just that one error just dropped him down from from an eight or something for me. So yeah, seven point five. Laporte, a, I thought I thought he didn't have a, a great game to be honest. The amount of times that someone was crossing the ball in and he went to volley it out, it was it was a bit of a weird performance from Laporte. A, but again. No, nothing to do with the goal so again you know what I mean in his head he's got he's got nothing to worry about there um, so yeah I'm just going to give him a 7.5 which I think is fair Shinshenko probably the worst game I've seen him play in a City shirt unfortunately first half had an absolute mare obviously at fault for the goal you know lost the ball a number of times getting out muscled um, and yeah a bit of a worry that second half he calmed down a bit and, put, and actually did some good crosses into the box as well going forward um, but yeah that first half performance and the fact that he was at fault for the goal um, just means that, yeah, unfortunately he gets a six. Yeah, difficult one, wasn't it, for Zinchenko? Had a, didn't have the best games. Uh, moving on to the midfield, we've got Fernandinho. Uh, for me, it's kind of shown that why Fernandinho doesn't play centre defensive mid anymore. Like, I was really excited before the game as well to see him in that position. I was buzzing, thinking, yes, Fernandinho back in there. But I just don't think he has the legs for it. I mean, no. he was losing the ball a lot, which is something that we, not, that we rarely see. He wasn't really effective in that role. And for me, I think... I would have preferred to have Rodri or Gundogan in that position for that game. Mm. Um, obviously, I can say that because of hindsight. Beforehand, I was absolutely buzzing to see him there. But yeah, not a, not a great game for Fernandinho. Give him a seven on that basis. Uh, Bernardo again, not a great game. He didn't he didn't really do much again. Like it, we spoke about him before, and he's, he's out of form at the moment. Uh, give him a seven as well. David Silva seven point five. It's, it's, it's hard to say when I had a really good game in it because we lost, but it, again, he didn't have the best of games. I think he, had, he was a bit more involved than Bernardo, yeah. so we'll give him a 7.5. He, he did have a chance, though, that really, you know, oh, yeah, he, typical he, David, he got thrown on goal and just kicked it straight at the goal. It, yeah. was, it was tricky, but he's got to try and find the bottom right corner. Um, but yeah, yeah, I thought 7.5 was fair. Yeah, his shooting boots are, are completely off at the moment, aren't they? Uh, Mares. Well, he's never had shooting boots. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Mares, 7. Uh, Again, really pretty ineffective on that side. Uh, we had a lot of the ball as well. We just couldn't really do much, yeah. really. especially when they're camping with 12, like 11 men in the it's box. tricky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, still in seven, pretty much the same reasons as that, really. And uh, Jesus, we've gone with a five. Uh, we give him a six against Southampton, even though we won 4-0, so I suppose it's fair enough to give him a five this time. Um, again, he he's not having a good time up front. We just spent like 
five ten minutes talking about him, so I won't speak quite too much. We went to subs, you know, take us for the subs. Yeah, subs. Yeah, they didn't really do anything. De Bruyne came on, and for the first five ten minutes, he was he was awful. To be honest, guys, he was playing balls. None of them were getting to his man. Um, you know, he was finding his way into the game, so fair enough. Um, eventually, the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, he was doing bits. Had a chance, a really good chance where he volleyed it, um, just went over. But yeah, it was difficult for him to, to do much. Um, and Foden, I thought all the wingers really had poor games, whether it was them or probably more likely just the fact that it was really difficult for the wingers to get involved in the game, given the way Southampton played. Um, but yeah, again, just... just found it really difficult to create and for that reason 6.5 um no one in the team really had any any great games um but but saying that guys they didn't not none of the, no real individual had a great game but we actually created a few chances we had quite a lot of shots we didn't play that bad but when everyone's dropping sevens a few sixes and a five that's why you lose the game guys and yeah could you know some people might think that they're, they're way out but i i, I think they're all right um no, i agree and finally, just just remind you about the competition that we're, City Extra are running, guys. Um, it's for this new home shirt. All you have to do is like, um, we don't have to like, but like the video anyway. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, uh, retweet the tweet on City Extra um, on the Twitter page, and just comment on our intro video, which we'll link in the description. Um, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, take care, and see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.